right. Hey, Chad, how's it going? Going good. Everything going well today? You've been pretty busy? Yeah, yep. Had uh, six meetings today and two current client visits. Really? Yep. Um, where are you traveling today? So today I was in Boone County, which is Lebanon and Zionsville. Uh, and then I had two more visits in, in Indianapolis on the north side. Oh, so you've been all over the place, kind of. Yeah. yeah, a lot of driving. <laughs> So um, can you give us a brief explanation of kind of the things that you do uh, throughout your day and what kind of products you sell? Yep. Yep. So mainly I, I would say 70% of my time is spent on new business, on new prospective clients. Um, I've got telemarketers that make appointments for me over the phone. So I run those meetings in person. Uh, at those meetings, I'll present to them uh, a product called Clover which is a business management solution for small businesses. So I'll do mostly that. And then I'll also spend some time going to current clients and doing some customer service work to make sure they're happy and answer the questions they may have or do more training for them. Cool. So um, kind of to go off that, um, I know that you talked a lot about, um, or you talked about kind of that, the telemarketing aspect. So what are, you know, some of those key, like, I guess, techniques that you use to find new uh, new prospects. I know, obviously you said that's 75%. So like, what are some of those key things that get you, get you in front of those clients? Yeah. So I'm not really, I kind of leave the prospecting up to my corporate office that handles the telemarketing team. But mm -hmm. I think what they mainly use is they use tools like Google, um, A to Z database. Um, some business reference databases is what they use to find local businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now we're targeting restaurants um, retail places, um, nail salons and auto repair. So are, are you guys, I guess, uh, nationwide or is this more kind of a Midwest, um, thing that is, that's kind of spreading out? Yeah. So we're nationwide. Um, I am the rep for Indiana. So I take okay. care of the whole state. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, um, uh, Matt, go ahead, do you have something to add? No. What was that? Um, so I was just going to ask a little bit about uh, the COVID experience you're, you've had so far, um, how that's affected your business, how that's affecting your meetings with clients. Yeah, great question, actually. Um, so when COVID started happening in March, I was, so typically I work in the field, in-person meetings. Back in March, I was at home for six weeks trying to do Zoom meetings like we are right now, doing phone calls, beating the phones. It was tough. <laughs> it was really yeah. tough. Um, but first part of June, I got back, or sorry, middle of May, I got back out in the field. And then I'd say most people are totally open to meeting in person now with maybe one here and there, but people are okay. Okay. with that, you know, wear a mask, don't shake hands. It's super awkward, but that's, it works. Yeah. Do you think that that's affected your numbers at all? Uh, the COVID? Epidemic? I don't know. I don't think so, honestly. I mean, I'm having the best year I've ever had in 14 years. Uh, I mean, it's, it's been awesome this year. I mean, really, our industry is really um, capitalized when we're in a downturn. Um, for example, for restaurants, we're able to help with online ordering, which is huge right now. People need yeah, that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So, Chad, uh, what kind of competitors are also in this market? Like, uh, who's, who's taking up your other market share? You know, I'd say Square and Toast are two of the other main ones. Okay. And um, what kind of like selling features do you guys have that you would try to persuade uh, your potential client to have over those uh, competitors? Um, a lot of it's price. You know, um, we are going to be a lower price point when it comes to the credit card fees. Um, and I think value uh, on, on the different apps the system has included how it can help your business grow. And then what I really hammer on is my personalized service. A lot of other companies don't have a local personal rep like me that's there in person, does the install in person, training in person, and then ongoing support. They don't have that. So that's really where I try and emphasize where I can add value. So do you guys have several devices that you, um, I guess, sell or I guess market, or is it kind yeah. of one standard uh, product that that's most common throughout. Yeah. So the product is Clover. 
And Clover has three different systems. They've got, you know, a mobile device, they've got a smaller base device, and they have a larger device that's more for restaurants and large retail shops. But Clover so, is the main hardware okay, line. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of that, so obviously, um, you know, with being able to collect, you know, payments and that, but is there another, um, I guess, system that goes behind that in terms of, you know, um, you know, seeing what you made and I guess more of like a, an administrative side that comes with it as well? Yep, absolutely. So the Clover system has an online dashboard, such as cloud-based at clover.com. So from there, you can make all your system changes. You can view reporting, do administrative tasks at that on a computer cool. anywhere in the world too. Cool. Yeah, so it sounds like Clover is basically an all-in-one CRM, basically. You can really handle every aspect of your business uh, based yeah. off of all the different functions that it has to offer, correct? Yeah, you really can. I mean, the most common functions within Clover is inventory management, service tracking, customer loyalty programs, um, gift cards, employee timekeeping um, for restaurants, table management. So it can, it can do a lot. And are all these applications developed by Clover itself or are there individual app designers? So majority of the apps are designed by Clover. There, there are a lot of other third-party apps um, that we can help people with as well. So it's a big app market. What kind Very of cool. integrations is included within Clover? I know we, when I've looked at a couple different CRMs that I noticed they have things such as Google Suite or integrating things such as LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, just to be able to keep up with customers and have an idea of what's going on, keeping everything organized. So I guess what kind of integrations does Clover use? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, some of this, some of these questions I defer to my Clover team who has a little more knowledge than I do. I know enough to be dangerous and that's about it. <laughs> I don't know if that's about the deal. But the CRM is one of the big functions of Clover. Uh, I know they do integrate with LinkedIn. I'm sorry, with, with Twitter and Facebook. For okay. example, a business with our rewards program they can blast that to their Facebook and Twitter page to announce the customers what their current programs and offerings are. As far as the CRM, I'm really not sure on what their integrations are, so I can't answer that one, okay. sorry. No worries, well, how about this? So what, what are you tasked with that's a little bit extra that you almost feel like takes up a lot of time? What are those things that aren't automated through the app that really eat up a lot of your clock? Uh, me personally, mm -hmm. driving. Um, what was that, Josh? Just just driving to your appointments, probably. Oh yeah, yeah. That's like the number one thing. I mean, I drive thirty five thousand miles a year in my car, typically. So, I'm on the road all the time. I want, I'm trying to I try and maximize merchant FaceTime, minimize windshield time. But the nature of my business is my territory is very large, so I have to do a lot of driving. So, Chad, do you guys have software that maybe helps you figure out what your most efficient path of travel would be uh, for visiting all your daily appointments? Is there any kind of software that you use for that? There isn't a software. I'm sure there probably is an app that lets you, like, plug in all your addresses and it gives you the most mm -hmm. efficient route. Yeah. With me being in this area for 20-plus years in this industry, I kind of know where everything's at. I can see a zip code and know what part of Indianapolis is at. So I kind of in my mind can, I have like a map in my mind, I guess, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I just kind of, I can see where things are at and I can plan it efficiently. So are, if, are you if, the only rep within the, um, I guess, Indiana area? So, you know, obviously this is your territory, but do you have other people um, who are, I guess, below you and also do a lot of, um, you know, work, work as well? Um, I have nobody below me. So I'm an independent mm -hmm. rep. Uh, my territory is Indiana, but I tend to focus on just Indianapolis to Lafayette areas. Okay. Okay. So are you from the, the, the around the Indianapolis area? From West Lafayette, actually. Okay. Uh, you are. You guys. Yep. So I grew up by Harrison High School. Wow. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, Chad, we're... so when, when you have uh, your main office – uh, prospecting are they booking your appointments for you or, or do they normally send you the prospects and then you reach out to them uh, they book appointments for me okay yeah and so and so you said they don't really take into account uh, exactly the path that you follow on your way there commuting well, around well so I send them a schedule every month so I send them like a schedule that says this day I'll be in Boone County this day I'll be in 
um, Hendricks County. Let's say I'll be in Indianapolis. So I do send them a schedule as far as what general area I'll be in. But like today, I traveled in Lebanon for two appointments in the morning, went to Zionsville for one at noon, and then back to Lebanon for three more. So okay. I, try and, I make it by county for the most part. I mean, I could have a half an hour between appointments, but it won't be like an hour. If there was a scheduling uh, like software available that could help uh, plan out your most efficient path of uh, commuting around to your appointments, would that possibly be something that could interest you in the future? Or would that help uh, your work uh, operations or possibly another employee in your same situation? Yeah, it definitely would. Uh, a lot of times we're at the mercy of when the actual client can meet. So a lot of times I can't just, you know, a lot of times a merchant or a business owner may have like a one hour window to meet or they may want a sharp time. So I'm really kind of at the mercy of what their schedule is and I have to work around that. Now, if I had a eight hour time block that I could, man I could make my route most efficient, that'd be great, right? The perfect world. But a lot of times that's why I had to go to the eight in Zionsville at noon and then back to Lebanon because the guy in Zionsville had to have a noon sharp. Yeah, so it's really just up to the customers. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, you, I mean, if you want to make the sale, you got to drive and get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> ben, did you have a question? Uh, I'm sort of just curious about sort of the objections he faces. Like, how is it, what do you sort of have to get around? I mean, you're driving all over the place, so I assume you're sort of looking to push and make that sale. But, like, what do you sort of experience in terms of, like, objections? What's, like, I'm what happens most often? Yeah, the most common objection I get is, okay, I'll think about it, or okay, I'll show my business partner. That's the most common one. How do you sort of, is there any way you get around that, or is it sort of just, like, what's your technique to get around that? Yeah, I think a lot of times people do want to speak to their business partner. I get that. So the most important thing you can do is really make a great impact right then, so that when they speak to the business partner, They've, they're armed with all the information possible to help make a decision together. And then there's a very important to set up a follow-up date and time. That way you aren't just like leaving the meeting like, okay, well, I'll call you next week. No, you said like, okay, I'll call you back on Tuesday at 11 a.m. And you put it on the calendar, like an inbox. Uh -huh. Or you arrange an in-person meeting again. That way you're there in person. Yep. Makes sense. Perfect. Awesome. awesome. Yes, Stu, did you have something to add there? Uh, I was just wondering, I was just seeing if, if anyone, um, you know, was had anything else to kind of, I think we're getting right here towards the end of our, our time limit. Um, but with that being said, I know that we are, um, you know, obligated to, to you know, kind of reach out and, and set up another meeting. And, um, you know, if we could, you know, set up maybe another 15 minute window to maybe talk about some technologies uh, that, that might actually be a benefit to you and, um, some, of your, some of your day to day operations, um, you know, whether yeah. you, you know, take them and implement them, but, um, you know, as much as, you know, maybe an idea and uh, we would love you to, to take a look at them. So, yeah. Are these um, technologies that you guys have created there in your project or ones you've outsourced out? No. So, so obviously over the course of the semester, we've been kind of reaching out into, um, you know, obviously COVID's had an impact with, you know, the world of sales. So we've been doing yeah. a lot of searching into these different technologies and, um, you know, how they can benefit, um, you know, not just necessarily bigger companies, but these smaller companies um, and with their day-to-day -day, day -day operations and, and the little things that can help benefit, um, you know, with efficiency and stuff like that. Have you guys interviewed Salesforce? We have not, uh, you know, interviewed, but we have done a lot within Salesforce. We have done a lot of, I guess, navigating through there and, and working with their system. So it's funny you bring this up because I actually have a call scheduled with Salesforce tomorrow mm -hmm. to discuss their CRM. Um, going back to one of the most, the, the challenging parts of my job is managing the follow-up, managing the follow-up phone calls, keeping track of um, when I pitch a deal, when they want a follow-up phone call, uh, keeping a file attached with our original proposal. That's all part that I need help with. So. A CRM is definitely a good discussion for us to have. So, Josh, let me know when you're available. We could do it um, probably not tomorrow, but first part of next week, I'll be open to that. Okay. That sounds great. Um, so, yeah, basically what we're going to do is we're going to get together as a team and we're going to talk about uh, what kind of uh, software that we've I think we're running reviewed. out of time. I think we're running out of time. <laughs> we maybe, um, so we maybe set a date for next week to uh, meet with you, uh, like a particular we're date here. and time that works best for you. Will this be in person or over Zoom? 
Uh, over Zoom. Over Zoom. Okay. Um, just one second here. How much time do we have? Uh, if it, if we, you need to send Josh an email, that's all right. There's no. Yeah, no I'll way. email him. Okay, let's do that. Perfect. All right, okay. Josh, awesome. email me. Okay. All right. You have Alrighty. a good one. Thank, right, you, guys, thank so you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate, uh, have a good one. Thank you. Bye.